This uh, video is about uh, uh, writing a function in R that will self-generate matrix data structures. Um, a quick epilogue about the preceding video, if you watched it, Vector Maker. Now, the purpose of this exercise is just to have some fun creating functions and also to teach a little bit about the nature of these structures, these data structures we're creating. Uh, of course, if in the real world you were given a task of writing a function that would create a vector, I doubt if you'd start by making a list inside the function to do it. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, that's the approach we used in this uh, example. Lists are really very handy structures because you can collect all kinds of different objects as the components, as you can see here. Uh, one other comment I wanted to make, this unlist function, what does unlist do? Well, unlist just will simply take a list and, and squash it, if you will, squash it back into a more primitive structure, in this case a vector. We, we don't want this function returning a list, we want it to return a vector, so we have to unlist our vector component that we randomly select. Okay, let's go on to Matrix Maker. Yeah, we, we don't use the, the um, vector maker function in Matrix Maker. Matrix uh, Maker is unique. In fact, a matrix is unique. You can think of a matrix as a two-dimensional array, uh, columns and rows, where the columns and the rows are the same length that is, all of the rows are the same length and all of the columns are the same length. You can have the number of rows and the number of columns does not have to be equal. Uh, and uh, all of the elements in the matrix are of the same type, data type. Now, if you read the literature, you'll find references to the requirement that a matrix must be all numeric. Actually, that's not true. You can have you can have uh, character values in the elements. They must all be of the same type. That is true, but they don't have to all be numeric. Okay, so let's look at creating a matrix. Now it's helpful to look at the R native function first, so let's do that. So we say question mark matrix, and that calls up the help page. And we can see how R does it. Again, there are these three functions, matrix, as matrix, is matrix. Matrix actually creates a matrix from a given set of values, and you can see from the R uh, function, the R defined uh, function to do that, it accepts uh, five different arguments, data, the number of rows, number of columns, whether it populates the matrix st structure that it creates from this data by row, or by column, by column is the default, and the name, the dimension names. If you want to give it, if you want to give the uh, the uh, uh, rows and columns names. So that's how R. Those are the arguments that R uses to create a matrix. However, in our assignment, if I may call it that, we were to create a matrix maker where there are again, this time, two optional arguments, number of rows and number of columns, and the user can specify um, either one or both or leave them out altogether. So, and if they don't, if they leave the arguments out altogether, Matrix Maker should randomly generate a, a matrix that has somewhere between five and 10 rows and somewhere between five and 10 columns and the numbers, let's just say numbers, the numbers in the cells should be randomly generated integers between 1 and 100. Well, we can use our sample function again. Um, this time we're go going to create uh, several formal arguments. Note, um, here are the arguments that we're creating. Note, here's our function keyword. Here's the name of our function. Here's our function keyword. Here's the list of formal arguments. And then following that, let's stretch this out a little bit. Following that, you see the body of the function, which in this case is only one one line. I'm, I use a matrix. I use a matrix function to to create a matrix. You might say, well, that's cheating, but uh, we're doing it really for illustration purposes here. I, I do a trick here where I just simply reorder the the arguments. 
so that if the user is unaware, the user has no reason to know that you can pass in data. I didn't state that anywhere. And uh, the user, you can assume the user knows that he or she can specify the number of rows and number of columns. And so we'll put that in first. Well, if I, if I leave data out altogether, then there's no way they can pass in their own data, which again is not a requirement. But if you put it as the first argument, when they pass in some number to be the row and some number to be the column, the function would read that value as being the data set. So that's why I put data last. Using the same names for the arguments that the rnative function does uh, enables me to put the arguments in any order whatsoever. Okay, and I use the same trick I used last time where I just simply sample from a set, a sequence from 5 to 10, one number randomly for the number of rows, and then again for the number of columns, if the user calls this argument, calls this function without specifying the number of columns, it'll just randomly choose a number, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. And then if they, if you want to generate, uh, well, you have to have data, actually. You have to have data. So uh, the user is probably unaware of that. So we have a data statement in there that generates a data set. Uh, that was a requirement, actually. Uh, numbers randomly generated integers between 1 and 100. So we have to have this. Well, how many, why do we have this number? Why are we making a data set of 15,120 from which to, to, uh, so to create our matrix? Well, if you think about it, how many numbers do you need? Well, you're going to have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 rows and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 columns. So you, you need a, a multiple you need to have the number of items, a multiple of 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9. Not 10, because if it's a multiple of 5, it's automatically a multiple of 10. So if you take those, those scalar values, 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9, you get 15, 120. If you have fewer than that, you might run out of, of elements uh, before you have populated all of your rows and columns, and you'll get an error. The matrix, you must have enough data to fill up the matrix based on the number of rows and columns. That's why we, we do that. And because I'm sampling from only 100, and I'm sampling such a large number, you need to change the replace statement for the sample function to true. If you try to sample 15,000 out of a set of 100, and you don't replace them every time you sample them, you'll run out of numbers quickly, so you get an error. So you have to say, you have to change the default, which is to not replace them in the sample function to true. Okay, and then all I do is I just simply <laughs> call a matrix in the body, and that's what gets returned. Okay, so let's load this up before, we, before our meter expires here on the YouTube length meter video, uh, length video, video length. Okay, so we load that up, and it seemed to go. And so now, Let's test it. We call it without specifying number of rows, number of columns. And let's make this a little bigger so you'll be able to see what's going on. Does it work? Well, sure. OK, so there we have nine rows, five columns. I don't give it names, so it gives it the default uh, two-dimensional subscripts, they're, they're actually indexes. These are indexes. They're frequently called subscripts. They're used to subscript elements, but they're indexes. Every time you do it, note, you get a different size because it's randomly choosing somewhere between five rows and ten rows and somewhere between five columns and, and ten columns. Okay, so you're always going to have five. And you might have as many as ten. And the numbers that populate it, this set is going to be different every time I call it because it's randomly, it's generating a new set every time. Now, what if they want to specify the number of rows and columns and they don't know anything about the order of the uh, arguments? So they, they just assume the first number is the number of, 
of rows and the second one's number of columns. Well, uh, can they do, will that work? It sure will. Every time we fire it up, we get three rows, four columns, and different sets of numbers. So that works just fine. Okay, well, let's move on to Data Frame Maker, and that will be the subject of our next video.